My favourite kind of piece, personally, sort of uh, exploding models in a maze. Um, what we're actually going to look at is a couple of different things. I'm going to try and give you a kind of overview of what's great about Smoke on the Mac and why this is such a good project to show. Um, it basically encompasses all the things that I kind of want to get through, and that is to do with basic editorial, uh, right through uh, sort of much more sort of creative uh, type work with actions, sort of keying, color corrections, and things like that, but also taking it into a slightly different dimension, which is getting into 3D compositing and things like that. So we're going to start on a very basic note, and that is really just with some basic editorial stuff. Now, what we've tried to do with the smoke is make it as sort of flexible as possible. So everything we're doing here is, um, is kind of full resolution. So one of the beauties of it is the speed that it works at. Uh, but also, we try and make it look as kind of uh, sort of uh, editorial as possible using sort of source record sort of conventions as uh, everyone's used to. With real basics here, what we can start doing is just dragging stuff down into a timeline. And what you're going to see is uh, here, we start building these things up. We've got little icons and stuff down here. Got a little list at the bottom here, so we can start banging some shots together. If I throw this one to the end of the line, we can just throw another shot in here, so now we're building up a timeline. And there's various bits and pieces we can do here. I can also just grab another shot, so something like, uh, let's grab something like so. And what we can do is we can just insert that in there. So really what we're doing is uh, we're kind of creating uh, a starting point for a lot of this stuff. Now at any point, we can uh, decide to go back to the desktop and uh, pick out another shot. So here, for example, we might pick a shot like this, and we might decide that it's going to go sort of, uh, and we're going to insert it maybe back into this shot here. So again, it's always kind of flexible and kind of easy to do, because you can use the keyboard, you can use the kind of mouse, you can use the pen, whatever it is. So really what we're doing here is we're just building a quick timeline, OK? Now if we split the view here, I'm going to then take that onto a slightly different level. So, for example, if we uh, put these different shots now into these different views, what we're going to try and do is balance these up. So, there's a couple of different things we can do here. Um, I might decide that actually this shot and uh, this shot want to follow the grade in this shot. So, what we can do, we can throw a color correction into here, and you can see that straight away what I'm actually getting is the ability to do grading in a full resolution sort of uh, view. OK, so I get uh, the whole interface is available to me. We get this really nice overlay UI, which gives us a lot of capability. Um, so what I'm also going to do in here is I'm going to switch it to a slightly different view. And we can start doing uh, multiple sort of selections of clips in the background. So if I come to here and I say, well, I want this, uh, this green in here to be matched to maybe this green in here, what you're going to get is a very subtle differentiation between the colors there. What's really nice about that is I can then take that effect here and I can drop it to this shot at the end. And you can see that very quickly we've matched these shots up. If we were then to add another layer on top and add another color correction, we can now start doing sort of look development based on a couple of other things. So we might decide we just want this a bit darker. Uh, um, maybe we just crank the contrast down and maybe make the saturation even a less. And you can see that really what we're doing now is we're grading at the top level. So if we go to one view here, it's very nice. We can just kind of come through. And these will all have multiple grades on them that we've applied in one kind of hit. And this is the beauty of the system, is it's this kind of all-in-one creative tool set, but in a very, very kind of dynamic area. The thing to remember, everything that we're doing here is full resolution, OK, all the time. So I'm not having to down res. I don't have to create proxies or anything like that. So that's just a very quick sort of uh, look at my basic editing. Um, if I just get rid of this for a second and we come to the desktop, what I can actually start doing here is maybe looking at a conform. Now, this conform was actually made uh, with ProRes files. 
Um, and it was actually conformed using XML. And if I just jump to the front here, we've got a couple of shots we want to concentrate on. So uh, we're going to try and take this on a stage further. Um, obviously, it's quite lucky that we get to sort of key uh, the lovely Elle McPherson here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to try and make it look a bit like the, uh, the, the spot. So if I just come up to here, you can see uh, what we're actually going to try and create is something a bit like this. Now, we're going to do it in a slightly different way. First and foremost, what I want to do is I want to show you quickly how I can create something from nothing in here. OK, so yes, I've got shot stuff. Yes, I've got graphic inputs. Yes, I can use Photoshop files. But I can also start making my own elements. And again, these are all HD elements. OK, everything we're doing here is HD. If I come out of here and we go into a paint module, now there's nothing in here. It's completely black. And we're going to make uh, a little uh, setup here. Now, I can use this thing called Auto Paint. Uh, and using various options in here, using a brush and just painting a few sort of crazy strokes that have got various kind of things attached to them. So you can see in here, the harder I push, the sort of further down it comes. And we can change various things to that. I'll just give you an idea of why we're doing this. Is If I come to here and I now put in some animation to this, what we can actually see is that those things are going to write on over time. OK? So actually, let's just do that in a slightly different way. Excuse me a second. Um, so what we're going to do is let's just try that with this set to the correct thing. So we use pressure instead. And the idea is that the harder we push, the more dynamic we get in the stroke. So you can do some really nice things, slower and faster and stuff like that. When we come to play this back, what we can say is we can set a few criteria here. And what it's going to do is when it sort of goes through there, it's actually going to write them on over time. So what we're actually going to get is this really kind of organic way of creating these effects. Now, you'll also see how quickly this process is. We're doing sort of uh, 100 frames of this very, very quickly. And again, really, this is just to prove a point. And what you can see is that we are creating these quite organic effects from scratch. Okay, And again, full resolution. And we can call it, sort of go in there, and we can refine that. We can do other bits and pieces with it. Fundamentally, however, if you spend a bit of time on it, what you can start getting is things that look a little bit more like this. OK, we've got multiple sort of versions all on top of each other here. And this is going to give us a backplate to actually start using in terms of our key here. So if we go to the front, we match out the original shot from the timeline. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this into what we call our modular key here. Now, please don't be under any misapprehensions. The thing that I'm about to show you isn't batch. OK? So this is actually a modular key here. The idea, or the clue, is in the title. It's modular keying, right? So the idea being is that we have loads and loads of different nodes down here to help you create basic keys. But it also allows us to do some more sort of compositing-based stuff. And I'm going to try and get through that pretty quickly. If I pull this out to start with, this is really just a way of uh, attaching clips into here. I've got a Kia at the top here, one of our award-winning Kias, um, if you can win an award for keying. In here, you can see that very quickly I can make a one sort of a one tap key. Now there's obviously lots of things I can do here, but you can see that generally it does do a very good job straight away. So we can see our background through here. For the moment, that will uh, do fine. What I've also done at the bottom here is I've got uh, a, an associated holdout map. And what that's going to allow me to do is to now combine that in a couple of different ways. If we come to the bottom here, I want to just quickly show you this, which is the thing called pixel spread. Now, if I show pixel spread here, um, and we do uh, something like this, the idea is that I'm taking the pixels in here, and rather than kind of contracting them um, to fit my key, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stretch them out to fit my key. So what you'll see is in here, when I start stretching these things out, what I'm doing is I'm filling the edge of the key with the color based on her hair. Okay, So this is quite, a, quite an impressive way to do this. Again, we've got various modes. And what this is going to allow me to do is give like a halo to this, so that when I come to the result, we're actually flooding the, uh, the sort of key signal with color. This allows us to do some pretty smart stuff, not just with keying, but also with uh, effects type work, and even, uh, even kind of uh, warping as well. So you can see here, I'm now starting to build this up quite nicely. Um, the next thing I need to do is now bring in my particles. So we'll bring in one of these particles. And again, you can see not only am I keying, but I'm building a basic composite. And this is the beauty of this kind of procedural workflow. So what we then do is uh, uh, sort of come to here. 
I will uh, feed in the various things. So we'll feed this into the foreground. We'll feed the, uh, the output of the pixel spread into the background. Uh, and no, we won't. We'll actually feel, feed the background of the holdout mat into the background. And what we get is a logical operation whereby now we can come in and we can choose how we're going to combine those images. So a bit like Photoshop layers, um, it's, there's plenty of stuff we can do with that. Now what we have is, uh, is a sort of methodology whereby we can go through and we can start combining these two things. So I want to put the, uh, the particles behind her. So I'm going to use this as the background, and this is the, uh, the foreground and the map. And what we're going to get in here, as long as we set up a few things, is we'll get the particles behind her head. Now, at the moment, uh, they look a little, bit sort of, uh, a, little bit sort of, a little bit flat, if you like. So what we can then do, and this is, again, the beauty of this system, is that you can do all this stuff without having to render or proxy it or down-res it. It's all working full res all the time. If we take this stuff out here at the far end, uh, and we just uh, maybe load in like a colored frame or something, we can set what we call a context. So now I can look here, but I can work back here. And if I throw a, a blur node in, but we look at the context, which is the result, what I can basically do now is I can start defocusing these in context of the background. So you can see that what I'm going to start getting is a really nice way of actually just pulling the focus back on those a bit, giving them a slightly more organic feel. So this is really just kind of cool. What I can then do once I've sort of uh, got to that stage, so I can come over to here, and if I go to the first frame, I'm just going to render out a couple of frames just to give you an idea of the speed. So it's going to basically do one second for one frame, okay? Which, considering what we're actually doing here with all the stuff that's going on, is pretty amazing. Believe me. Um, if we uh, we were then to sort of come out of here and uh, go back to the desktop, what you'll see is I now have a clip here. If I drop that into the timeline. Uh, in the right place, if I just drop it in here, what I'm now going to have in my timeline is on top, I've got her composited, and underneath, I've got the original shot, which is a kind of cool way of working. Not only for that reason, but also because if I come into that shot, everything I've sort of been doing in there is remembered by the system. So I'm not saving anything. Everything is remembered, embedded in the media. If I double click, what we've just done there, excuse, <laughs> excuse me. Um, if we double click what sort of uh, the clip there, you can see I come straight back into my entire setup. I don't have to recall anything. It's just there with the media. And obviously, if we were to archive this or anything like that, it would go with it. It's a very, very dynamic system. It allows us to do a lot of things. Versioning, for example, if if we were to come back to the desktop, now what I've got here is another clip, which uh, all I have to do is load this now into the, uh, the modular Kia, and what we'll see is at the far end, with the new uh, versions loaded in, everything's now applied. The key, all of the blurs, the particles, everything else. And if yes, of course, I can see that there's Xs in here that need to be replaced and that they need to be tracked, but that's not a massive problem. We come back to the Kia here, we go into the garbage mask, we draw a quick garbage mask around that. And when I say quick, I mean quick. Um, and when we return now and we come back to the end here, what we're going to see is a result that has no X's in. And you can see procedural compositing. This is how it works.